So now we've talked a lot about dynamic, uh, we can also use that in conjunction with this new micro poly edition. So let's go out of edit mode here, let's hit control N to clear our canvas, and we're just going to drag a brand new plane primitive on our document here, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, we're going to go right back down here to geometry, turn on dynamic, I'm going to turn smooth down to zero, and let's play with this micro poly. Now in order to see these micro polys a little bit better, what I'm going to do is go up here and hit reconstruct a couple times just to give us less geometry to work with here. And just to make it a little bit easier to show some other functionality, I'm going to turn on the, or click delete higher. So this is just no subdivisions, this is just the geometry we're looking at. So a lot of questions on the internet, especially from ZBrush users as well, what's the difference between micro poly and micro mesh? Well micro poly is going to draw this and replace this mesh on the fly. Uh, it's also very similar to nano mesh. We're going to be getting into nano mesh new functionality later, but micro poly is probably a better, well, I don't know. It's very, they're, they're both have their own uses. Nano mesh has a lot of functionality in here with like changing the width and adding variations. So if you want to scatter or add, you know, little randomizations for your instances on here, that's what I would use nano mesh for. And again, we'll get into nano mesh later. Micro mesh is similar to Let's go ahead and close these menus down. Micro mesh or micro poly is similar to micro mesh, and then if we go down here to modify topology, there's a micro mesh tab. If we click this and we add a ring, it's going to say, "Hey, you need to turn on draw micro mesh in the render palette." You can hit OK. You can go up here to render, go in here to render properties, turn on draw micro mesh, and now you're going to see uh, there's it looks you, know, you can kind of see there's kind of rings on here. If you go in here to BPR render, now you're going to see it's going to render those rings. But as soon as I move my canvas, uh, that rendering goes away and it's just a preview. Now you can go over here to a line edge in your micro poly that'll put them all in one uh, direction here, but that's about all you can do. If you want to go in here and like move these polygons around and then hit render again, you're going to see uh, the micro poly or the, the polygons are just basically mushing around instances of that ring uh, on your micro mesh. Now what micro poly will do, let's go ahead and turn micro mesh off. What MicroPoly will do, if I turn MicroPoly on, the first thing it's going to do is give you a whole bunch of cool options. And there's a ring in here, an 8x8 ring. We'll get to those in a second, so I can just do a really quick <laughs> direct comparison. I'm going to hold down Control and click on MicroPoly, and we're just going to grab that ring 3D. So now we have, you know, I'm tumbling my camera, and those rings are staying on there. So it's drawing these rings dynamically in real time. So if I go in here with my move brush and pull around, I'm getting the same result as micro mesh, but I can see it in real time. And if I ever go down here and turn dynamic off, that's the geometry that's controlling that micro poly. So let's go ahead and undo those modeling changes I made. So that's one of the strengths of micro poly is it's like micro mesh, only you can see it happen in real time. And there's some really cool stuff you can do with this.